Once in the forest on the shores of the great lake we call Lake Michigan, lived an Ottawa Indian boy. The boy had a name, but everyone had forgotten it. They called him Lazy Bones, but they said it with a smile. For the boy wasn't really lazy. It was just that he was always watching, always wandering by himself. Sometimes he would watch the women pounding corn into meal. Sometimes the boy watched the men before a hunt making arrowheads out of flint. But the boy didn't help them. Instead, he went by himself, far into the woods, always quiet, always watching. He saw where the red squirrel hid its nuts. He saw where the deer drank and where the wolverine left his big paw marks. He had one friend, a little girl named Gray Fawn, and he told her stories about the woods. The woods and I understand each other. The trees are my friends. The birds and bees are my friends, and the animals come at my one morning, Gray Fawn went to gather berries, and by late afternoon, she had not yet returned. The men of the tribe found her moccasins near the lake, but they didn't find Gray Fawn. The chief, her father, cried angrily, she must have been captured by the Saginaws. The men painted their faces and prepared for war. <laughs> While the men prepared for war, the boy called Lazy Bones went to the shore where Gray Fawn's moccasins had been found. He said to himself, if Gray Fawn had been captured, she would have dropped her berry basket. I don't think she was captured. I think she took off her moccasins to go wading. He looked along the shore until he found a footprint in the mud. He said, she came out here and couldn't find her moccasins. He sang, my woodland friend. Tell me where is Gray Fawn? Which way did she go? Oh, tell me, please, that you know and your signs I will follow to her. Oh, -ho. Gray Fawn and I. When the boy sang the song, a porcupine that had been gnawing young willow shoots stopped and stared at him. The boy said, I think Gray Fawn went this way to gather willow splints for a basket. He looked and he found places where the willow shoots had been broken. He followed the trail among the willows into the forest. My woodland friends, tell me where is Gray Fawn? A squirrel ran down a tree trunk and stopped his nose pointing. The boy looked and saw where Gray Fawn's bare feet had disturbed the leaves. Which way did she go? A rabbit jumped out of some bushes, and the boy looked and saw where Gray Fawn had pushed through. He thought, she knows she is lost, and is too frightened to look where she's walking. Oh, tell me, please that you know and your side I will follow to her gray fall, gray fall. Just then a flock of crows began to scold angrily. The boy went to the noise for he knew that crows will scold when they're disturbed by someone who has no weapons. There, under a tree, he found gray fawn. The boy took gray fawn by the hand and they set out for home. See, there! And when the men saw the children, they laughed with relief and joy. And the chief, Gray Fawn's father, put his hand on the boy's head and said, Now I will give this boy a name. I will call him Little Hawk, for he has the sharpest eyes of all the Ottawas.